Near the surface of the moon, the distance that an object falls is a function of time. It is given by this function, where the distance equals 2.6667 times the time squared, where t is in seconds and d of t is in feet. If an object is dropped from a certain height, find the average velocity of the object from t1 to t2. All right, so let's try to just visualize this. So let's pretend here's the surface of the moon. We have a particular object. Let's just say it's up here and the object is going to fall. Okay, we're gonna drop it. We know that the distance that this object covers is a function of the time that has elapsed. Okay, and it is given by this formula. So I'm just gonna write that down here. D, and instead of writing D of T, I'm just gonna write D for now, all right? D will be equal to 2.666. Seven. Oh, that's an evil number. Squared, right? Times time squared. So uh, basically, if we know the time that has elapsed, we can find the distance. Okay? Remember, they told us the time is in seconds here, and then the distance will be in feet. Okay. So now, after this ball drops, we'll assume that it starts at t is equal to zero. Now, you know, probably just by, I mean, if maybe you've taken physics or maybe you're taking physics now, or maybe you will take physics. Um, but you know that as an object falls, it kind of speeds up, right? So let's assume that after one second, the uh, ball is in this spot, roughly. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to dot it just so, or, not, or, or dash it. Okay. Let's say it's in that spot right now. So after one second has elapsed, right after the one second has elapsed, so I'll say at this particular point, the time is equal to one, we can indeed calculate this particular distance right here. This distance that the ball will say from you know middle to middle, we can calculate that distance that the ball has fallen. How do we do that? Well, again, we know the function that relates the distance and time. So if you know the time that has elapsed, remember, we can find the total distance covered. That's what that function tells us. So let's actually just calculate it. So the distance that would have been covered, or that the object would have fallen, is equal to 2.667 times the time that has elapsed, which is one second squared. Right, so the distance here would be equal to, the distance here would be equal to, let me take out, well, I, I went to the calculator, and I then looked at the, I looked at the math. I said, I hopefully don't need a calculator for this one. 2.6667, and that is then in feet, right? I'll just abbreviate FT. So you know the distance here, that the distance that the ball traveled is going to be 2.6667 feet, okay? All right. Now, what's going to happen? Well, let's say two seconds now has elapsed. So now the ball is going to continue to travel, right? But the ball is probably going to move a larger distance now over the next second. Let me just move the moon down a little bit here. So now the moon, uh, excuse me. So now the ball, uh, the ball, whatever it is, it's, it says an object. Um, so the ball now will travel a greater distance now over the next second here than over the first second. Again, because the object is speeding up. So now, let's say the object finally hits the, the surface of the moon. So let's, let me just erase that one second. Let me just try to put in my little ball there. I know the sizes are changing, but what are you gonna do? All right, and now it fell down to there, okay? So let's say that this is now time at two seconds. And now what I wanna do is I wanna calculate the total distance covered, okay? Now, if I, if, I calc if I plug two into this equation, it tells me the total distance that has been covered from the beginning, okay? So that means that the distance that I would calculate would be this total distance from the start to the end, basically, all right? So why don't we do that? So we have the total distance covered would be equal to 2.6667 times the time that has elapsed squared. The distance now is gonna be 2.6667 times the elapsed time, which is two seconds, and square that. So two squared is four, 
and then take 4 and multiply it by the 2.6667. So this becomes 10.6668. All right, and that is in feet. So we just calculated now the distance traveled in two seconds, right? Right here, that black line that I drew is going to be 10.6668 feet. Okay? All right. So now, how do we find, okay, so we got that. Now, how do we finally calculate this average velocity concept? Well, you can memorize the formula. This is a physics pr concept. Uh, you'll see it a little bit of math here, but it's basically a physics concept. So we know that average velocity is going to be equal to the change in displacement, they call it, over the change in time. They use the variable x for displacement. Now, what do you mean by displacement? Isn't, is not that distance? No, it's not exactly distance. Uh, we have a video on the, the, the difference between displacement and distance. I don't think you need to view it yet unless you take physics. But just assume for right now that displacement is the same thing as distance. Okay, actually in this problem there is no difference between the two, although the concepts are different. Um, there is no difference in terms of the numeric value here for the distance or the displacement. So knowing that, again, just consider that the, the displacement is the distance that is traveled. We can then state this, right? That is basically the d2 or the, di oh, let me use x for now because I, I'll keep it consistent. It's basically the second displacement minus the first displacement, which is basically the same thing as saying the second distance minus the first distance. All right, all divided by then t2 minus t1. So notice, I really do have two values here. I have two particular times and two particular uh, distance values, right? I don't care what you call one and two, just be consistent. If you're going to call two, the time two as your t2, then you better call this thing d2, all right? So maybe what I'll do is I'll put a little two, a little two, a little two, and we'll say that this was time two, okay? And then over here, I'm going to put d1, d1, d1. And then this was T1 that correlated with it. So now all we have to do is plug in the values. So the X2 value was the, I really, I should have called this X now. I'm using Ds, I'm using Xs all over the place. I apologize because the problem is they're asking for velocity and technically they're telling us distance, uh, which is actually uh, not appropriate. But uh, so let me do this. Let me just change this to a D for now. Okay, notice that this is not really the velocity formula. All right, but... As I mentioned, the numerical values will be the same here. So let's say it's going to be 10.6668 minus then the 2.6667, all divided by the change in time, 2 minus 1. And the average velocity here will be simply now 10.6668 minus 2.6667. And I mean, that comes out to basically now, oh, I did a multiplication sign, but I don't really need to. I'm going to round it here slightly, guys, all right? It should be equal to about 8. Right, 8 over 1, which is just 8. And this will now be in feet per second, because those were the units they told us. All right? And uh, that about does it. So basically what we just calculated was we calculated then the velocity from time 1 to time 2. Right? Meaning I would need to know this distance from here to here, which we found by subtracting the big distance or we found by subtracting the small distance, I should say, from the big distance here, right? That would have given us just this interval. And then the time that had elapsed over that interval is just one second, as we, as we found. Anyway, all right, that's enough. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hopefully this video helped. Please remember to subscribe and tell your friends, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.